10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome. Do or do not. There is no try. You called down the thunder. Well, now you've got it. I'm coming to get you. Tom? What's up, Kelly? What's going on? Not much. I heard you giving offering a challenge, so we're accepting it. And uh, we're a group here. I think you know that, right? So what do you mean, offering a challenge? What do you mean? Well, it's in the title of your stream. Yeah. So, thought, we're, yeah, we're I, answering your challenge. Let's, let's see. What's your challenge? Go ahead. So I thought you chose not to come earlier. I never. Well, I mean, you chose not to. I mean, you can stay. At the beginning, but I, I have, I, I've been going for three hours already. So I yeah. mean, w why show up now? Because I had other things going on. I mean, you, did, did you chose you, that after we already had something scheduled? Is that was that a demand in your email that I come at the beginning? It was for seven o'clock. You agreed to it. You never, you never said that it was a demand that I must be in there the seven. email. It said for Friday at seven p.m. You said sure, that sounds good. You said it twice. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there, and I'm here. So what's, what's the issue? Go ahead. So what's the issue? So, yeah. of the videos that you have done of me, have you actually watched the whole video? I watched enough. I don't need to. Because when you did your first video of me on Saturday night, the first one, you only addressed Romans 3 portion of it. You didn't actually address my Romans 4 or Romans 5. Why not? Irrelevant to my criticism. So why would I need to look at 4 and 5 to look at 3? That makes no sense. Because you misrepresented a lot of things that I shared there. You didn't actually accurately represent me. Can you can you illustrate how I misrepresent you? Go ahead, I'd like to hear it. You said I teach a works based gospel. Yeah, backloaded. Yeah. So do you, you know the difference? So, so tell tell me now on my channel, how do I actually teach a back or backloaded, whatever you want to call it, works gospel? You expect performance based salvation as a result of your salvation. So it's not front loading the gospel, it's back loading the gospel. So you're making it meritorious or a prerequisite that uh, a, a true born again Satan, this is, I mean, I've even saw in your, your chart, you put a chart up, which you read yourself out loud, that they will do good fruits, they will persevere in Christ, will be like Christ. And all that is absolutely unfounded biblically. You didn't you didn't demonstrate that anywhere in scripture. Did you watch the rest of the video after the slides or did you only just watch that little portion of the slides? I don't I why would I need to go further? I think that says enough. So let me just kind of illustrate what I'm sharing here. I'll show you. Okay. Give me just a second to put it up here. So when you look at can you see that there? So when you were doing your response um, in my slides, I'll go back to it over here. Where are we at here? There we go. So here's my slide number one where I go into the gospel. And all three of my slides had the title gospel up top. So I clearly define what the gospel is here, which I would assume you would have no disagreement there. Then I talk about here about those who are born again. I go through this list of what we are and how God's going to be working our lives. And I always mention how it's God who is doing these things in our lives, not of our own flesh. And then I talk about here about how denying ourselves, we decrease, Jesus increases. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah I, so I saw that. You, 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 didn't go, you didn't actually watch any of the video after this, though, correct? No, not much. Very little. So the reason why I want to say that, because then if you go here, then I'm actually going into different scriptures, clarifying what exactly I was sharing, why I was sharing what I was sharing, 
and going through multiple scriptures of us as Christians, what it means to be growing in Christ through sanctification, how God is the one who is changing us, how he is the one who is predestined us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, that he has prepared that we should walk in good work. So these are all things to which, as Christians, our lives will have change and that he's the one who's working in our lives. And so your when you did what you did, when I saw it, you accused me of saying you have to do all these things in no, order to be saved. Say no, I just went no, through I didn't say that. Video. No, 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 no. I, I played me, your stuff. You said no, I didn't. I mean, let me tell you what I actually said. You're People saying that these early. things People will happen as a early. result of your salvation. I heard I, this is exactly what I said. Don't do not straw man what I said. Don't misrepresent me. I'm just saying I played your video earlier so people know exactly what you said. No, I, that's not what I, I'm telling you. What I said, I, I didn't say that you have to do those things to be saved. That's that's you a, said I that's said a straw you man. Went, you went through all this list saying this is what Kelly Powers is saying. Expects to, to be saved, right? Things You're making those saved. expectations, yes or no? Sorry, are you making those expectations, yes or no? No, those are not expectations that make you save. Those are things that I never said that. That's irrelevant to what I'm asking. That a saved irrelevant. Will, no, it's not irrelevant. Yes, it is. How, are they how, expectations? So Tom, yes or no? Tom, how long have you been a Christian? Quote unquote. How how long would you say? None of your business. Five years, ten years? I'm just asking. Possibly. I've been a Christian at the age of six. I'm just a simple question. I mean, I'm not I I, I don't feel like giving personal information to you, man, because you throw me under the bus, you, you slander me. Would you say at least five years? I'll I'll say possibly. Okay. Are you any different now than when, before you became a Christian? Any different? You mean behavioral wise, or what yeah, do you how, mean? Like, how has your life changed since you believe you became a Christian? How, wh whatever it was, okay. how, how long? Well, you know, like, so how, what has? It's been, what I mean, I've several years, but that's all I'm gonna. I'm all I'm gonna let you know and give so, out is just so several years. What would you say has been different in your life since you become a Christian? Well, I would say the grace of God has uh, enlightened me big time. I used to be a hardcore work salvationist. Okay. And uh, I used to be, you know, there had to be a performative level for, you know, of course, I, I, I know that's, that's, what, that's what changes. Now I know I'm more grace grounded now, but grace based Christian, I, I believe. And uh, God has justified me. And I'm, you know, I'm uh, promised that I will, I will be uh, persevere. Just or second, have eternal second. security. Just one sec, Tom. So moderators will allow dude to say whatever he wants. Just let him say whatever he wants. That's fine. So the reason why I say that, Tom, I'm far from perfect. I make mistakes every single day. I say that often on my stream. I'm far from perfect. I don't, I'm not at all sinless. Right. My point of what I'm sharing is, is as Christians, as we grow in Christ, God's work in our lives, we're being conformed to Christ. That's what Paul says in Romans 8, 29. So as Christians, we should be, right? Growing. I like that word. I like right? that word, sure. Right. Yeah. Right. But if someone claims, let's say for 15 years, someone claims to be a Christian, but they have literally nothing that represents Jesus in their lives at all ever since that profession of quote unquote faith. How does that jive with you? I would still say they're saved if they if they uh, assented to the, the 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 conditions to be saved. If if they truly believe Romans ten nine, they are saved unconditionally. They are, they are promised uh, eternal life. So th they they might not temporally persevere, but they are they eternally persevere. And thank God for that because I don't think so, anyone would be able to. So let me just make sure you understand my question. So a person who's claiming to at some point believed in Jesus, but 15 years, nothing has changed, quote unquote, nothing's different about their life, nothing at all. You're going to say they're Christian, and my question is, did Jesus fail? No. Because we're supposed to be, according to God's plan, being conformed to the image of Christ. And being conformed, wouldn't you agree that there's going to be some kind of change? No, we that that person failed. I would agree, 
but Jesus succeeded because they're not going to, they're not lost. They're not eternally lost. They're, They're still saved. They're a child of God. So it's still a win. And that's, that's why it's the good news. So if a person mm -hmm. whom God is supposed to have now come into their life, they've been born again of the spirit who is going to convict them of sin, who's going to walk with them. God is going to be conforming us to the image of Christ, sanctifying us, but there's been no change at all in 15 years. And you're going to say it's the person's problem, but yet they're still saved. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with you on one thing. Actually, you just said it's actually true. You know why it's the person's problem? Because yeah, you would so say they're, they're not saved. They were never right. generally converted to Christ at all. Right, yeah. I know that's the, that's a lordship position, I know. No, that's just called true Christianity. So you, you can, say, Kelly, that's the, again, you say that, sure. There's going to be something in your life in time that just like when something's being put in ground, and you, and you put water on it and the dirt's there and it's being nurtured and cultivated in time. It may be slow, but something's still growing under, under the ground. And eventually we see something from what's being caused in growth. God works that growth in our lives. If he doesn't, that's, then God fails. No, he doesn't fail. We fail. But that's an assumption. I mean, I, I could easily dispel what you said scripturally, Hebrews 5. There was the Christians that were part of the Hebrew community there, or whoever wrote that epistle. And uh, they've been in the faith so long that they should have been teaching the milk to others. But not only have they, they've uh, absolutely failed doing that, they need to be taught the milk again. So I think that assumption absolutely fails in this under scrutiny biblically. So this is one of the things that I shared in my video on that Monday night that you didn't go check out and listen or check things out. And I shared this a little bit earlier too. And this is from Paul, Ephesians 5. Let me just read this for a little bit. Paul says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But immorality or impurity or greed must not be even named among you. Must not even be named among you. As it is proper among the saints. There must be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather of giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedient. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. Would you call Paul a works-based teacher, a backloading the gospel here with all Absolutely these instructions not. and teaching? No. These are not? exhortations, yeah. Is he telling them not to do these things? Would that not be a works-based? Yeah, he's exhorting doctrine? them not to do that. It has nothing to do with what you're saying, though. When I shared earlier about where to deny Christ or to deny ourselves, to decrease and increase, he's increases, that we are to be walking after him and all those things, those are things to glorify God that we are doing for us. Sure, we should do those. Yeah. Look at all these things he says you're not to do, and how can you not say with a straight face that wouldn't he be considered a backloaded gospel just like you? They say accused to me. No. Of. And, and how would you how? even, how would you assume that this is a, is a threat of, are you saying that this is a threat against eternal salvation or something? Inherent in the kingdom of God or Christ. It talks about Jesus. Says you cannot enter. Hold on, Uh-oh. hold on. Born again. Jesus said you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Yeah, this is the you kingdom just of made Christ my point. Here. Are there two kingdom of gods? There's two inheritances. Did you even know that? 
Give me an example where there's two different types. Absolutely, of I will. Absolutely. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. And put it up okay. side by side with on. 1 Let's Peter 1, 3 through 4. Colossians what? Okay. Colossians what? Col it's Colossians, uh, let's see here, 323 through 24. All right, let's go look at it. All right, so whatever you do, do your work heartily for the Lord rather than with men, knowing from the Lord that you will receive a reward of inheritance. Okay. So there's rewards. You can lose rewards, 1 Corinthians 3, but you're still saved. Okay, now go to 1 Peter, 3 through, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 4. First Peter one three through four, yeah. Okay. First Peter one three through four. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Okay. So do you see that there's two different types of inheritance there? Nope. So one it. says it's reserved for us, right? Because we're born that again. Means sure. It can't be taken away. Sure. However, the other one is not uh absolute. It's it, it's not that it's it will happen, it's it's probable. So here, in regards to, as you said here, whatever you do, do your work heartily as from the Lord rather for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance. What what reward are they going to receive, receive here? For service, crowns. We were just going into that tonight. So there's crowns that they can earn. Is that what it says here? Well, that's what that's the reward. That's what rewards are. Reward is an eternal life. Are you saying reward is an eternal life? I'm just asking you what you said. You you you've added a lot of words to. The okay, I'm here. explaining what reward is. Oh, I, I I get that. I get that. Okay. So what I'm sharing, just let's go back to Ephesians though. Here, where 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 are we at? That's right. So Ephesians here. There seems to be a warning here about you know that for certainty, no immoral or impure impure person or covetous who is dollars or has an inheritance in the kingdom of God. You're saying here, this is talking about that they just won't get any type of rewards. That's what you think Correct. is teaching here? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I'll use a different one then, even though I don't I, I don't see that at all. And it's but, the same look. for Galatians 5. Okay, you're going there. Okay, never mind. What about this one? But for the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, Murders, immoral persons, sorcerers, idolaters, all liars, they'll just have their rewards taken away from them. Is that what it's not in the book of they're not written the book of life? Just go up. You can you can read that or down. It tells you that these people are not in the, the book same of life. Type of people from Ephesians 5. So what? And where are they going here? Well, yeah, the lake of fire, but they're not in the book of life, though. So you think that the group over there, they can do all those things and it's okay. But then this group over here do the exact same things, but they're going to hell. Yeah. They didn't accept the gift of eternal life. If they're not going to hell for their sin, Jesus paid, uh, paid the sin debt for, for all people. This is the land that taketh away the sin of the world. First, first John 2, 2, the ease of propitiation for not only our sins, but the whole world's sins. So the sin is not an issue. It's the imputed think, righteousness of Christ. That's the issue. Do you think that Christians can just literally do all these things and it's okay and they get automatically a, a, a to go, you know, ticket to heaven because they have said a certain profession? No, I never said that. Okay? I never said that. What well, sounds just because like you it. it's because you iterate words does not mean you're saved. I'm just saying, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna repeat Romans 10, 9 through 10. Those who that. confess and believe in that. their heart. I got okay? that. I totally believe that truly. If they're truly born again, they truly mean it. I agree with that. Exactly. No yeah, exactly. But what about these people here? First Corinthians 6. He says here, or do you not know that the unrighteous is that 
Christians? No. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is this rewards? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infinite, or homosexuals. Same kind of category of Ephesians 5, but here they're called the unrighteous. Are, there not, are, are the unrighteous going to somehow also receive rewards in heaven? Well, I don't even know. Are you, are you saying these are believers? Because it says that you were once these things. So how do you know these are believers? My point is it says right here, or do you not know that the unrighteous, so we know exactly who he's addressing here, mm -hmm. will not inherit the kingdom of God. There's that kingdom of God that we just talked about a little while ago from what we were just looking at over here in Ephesians chapter 5. So I'm right. just comparing the two. So here it says idolater, inheritance, kingdom of God. So is this the same kingdom of God that Paul is talking about in, in 1 Corinthians 6? Yes or no? The same kingdom? It's I, I think this would be positional. I think this would be sonship inheritance, not uh, reward inheritance. Say that again. I don't, I don't know what you mean. So in, there's two different inheritances. I think I showed these scriptures that actually demonstrated that. So it's, it's, there's two possibilities. It would be inheritance of rewards or sonship inheritance. And I gave you two scriptures to demonstrate that. I don't think this is rewards. And the reason is, is 1 Timothy 1, 9, that uh, those who are righteous are not under the law. But then it, it lists those things you're seeing right here. So these people are under the law. So if you're under the law, then you're unrighteous. And so I'm, um, so I'm kind of just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of doing a little tongue in cheek here. Of course, I don't really mean what I'm about to say. I'm just kind of confused though, because you're going to say Ephesians five. This is talking about rewards. For this, you know, for certainly that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of God of Christ of God gives this list of stuff. You're going to say here, oh, for Christians, this just means rewards. But then the exact same language Paul says over here, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Same language, no different. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, infinite, homosexuals, thieves, yeah. covetous, mm -hmm. drunkards, revilers, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So is this the same location or what's verse going on Verse 11, read verse 11, Kelly. Oh, I got that. Such for some are you, were you. I get that. Well, no, no, not only that. Neither believers. You are think. justified they and are sanctified. Sanctified, justified, and guess what? It has They're nothing to do, so it has nothing to do with behavior. They're not you just living made my point. They're Thanks not for living playing. that lifestyle anymore. That's not the that's, thing. It says, doesn't say that, says, Kelly. Read it. Says, it says you're washed, you're sanctified, you. and justified. Um, um, such were some means this was what you used to be. You're not this now. No, they're not because they're not under the law anymore. So you, not, you, you, you're not getting it. They're not kind of lifestyle anymore. This means they're no longer it's, like it's that. It has nothing to do with lifestyles, Kelly. And this it is why you're missing, the, you're, you're dropping the it ball here does. big time. It does. See here. Does justification yes. have to do with works, Kelly? We are justified by uh -huh. grace alone in Jesus Christ. By faith, not told, of works. But we're also told to prove to be Jesus' disciples. Do you agree or not? I agree. That is another good assumption. How do you prove to be a Jesus' disciple in this world? It says keep in his it? word. You keep in his word. That's what how it do says. You keep his word, Tom. No, keep in his word. How do you prove yourself a disciple to the world? How do you show Jesus it? How do you display tells it? us. Jesus tells us you keep uh -huh. in his word. So how do you do it though? How does it if you're in the real world and you have a job or you're someplace, how do you live out this thing called Christianity? How do you prove to be his disciple? Do, I mean, do the things that he says. Like he like says, what? feed the poor and everything in between. Yeah. Like what else? You know, um, I mean, the, the fruits of the spirit. Try to love. I think everything, it, everything is embodied by love. And it says the law is summed up in two commandments: love, love God with your whole heart and your neighbor. So, loving your neighbor. So, do you think when Jesus said, "Prove"? To be my disciples, was that a suggestion that was like you might need to do that, or was something that we're called to do that we're 
that this is, means that we're a changed life. I, I would agree. That is something that he expects us to do. He wants us to do that. So that is, he's serious about forces. it. It's not a backloaded works-based gospel. It's actually something that demonstrates we're actually genuine followers of Christ. It has nothing to do with salvation, though. Why are you making but it about salvation? To be a disciple than one who claims to be, but does not actually genuinely live it out, wouldn't you say that that could possibly be a counterfeit? No. Uh-uh. Do you know that in the real world there's counterfeit money? I agree. Do you I believe agree. there could be people that could be counterfeit Christians? Galatians 5, that we wore our flesh worth against the spirit, makes us do the things we don't want to do. We have the flesh, Kelly. So Are you saying that our flesh is perfected you, Tom, or something? Tom, do you believe it's possible to be people in this world to be counterfeit Christians? Do you believe it's possible? I do. I don't discount that. I'm so, talking about genuine so, Christians that believe. So let me ask you a question. Just to, trying to get where you're at, because this is our first real kind of conversation like right. this, right? I'm asking questions for clarification. Okay. What would be some examples you could think of that could be quote unquote mistaken for people to be real Christians, but they're actually counterfeits? What are some examples? Judas. Okay. What does that mean? That he went through the motions. He never truly believed, believed on Jesus. It was lip service. I don't think he put his trust in, in Christ. So he was all about himself. He thought he was righteous and he and through the law and self-righteousness. I think Judas was very self-righteous. Okay. What about, say, for example, Matthew 7, when Jesus says, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. They thought they were doing things in Jesus' name, and that made them Christians. What do you think about that? Yeah, there, there's there's something that's said there that I think that is very important and critical to that verse, or that, 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 that text, and that is he says he never knew them, not once knew them, kind of knew them, somewhat knew them. He never knew them. And we know in John 10, he says, my sheep follow me, and they know me. That's correct. So these were never saved. And why Why were they never saved? Well, it tells you because they trusted themselves. Look what I did. Okay. I casted out demons. Look what I did, Jesus. They didn't trust in him. Well, they were, but they did say it was in his name. So they thought what they were doing was still yeah. in Christ. It wasn't about their works. It was about them doing it in Jesus' name. They thought that made them Christian. Wow. Well, I mean, they ascribed his name to it. So, so do the or so do the Mormons. They ascribe Jesus's, right. you know, the name of Jesus too. The, now, what, let me give another example. the Mormons. What about and, say, and I assume we might be on the same page here. What about say James two? You know, yeah. James says someone says they have faith, but then they have no works. Right. Verse fourteen and on. So someone says they have faith, but then there's nothing really to demonstrate it. What do you think? What's, what's the problem with that? Someone says they have faith, but then right. nothing to demonstrate it. Well, I think Romans 4 explains that. It's before men, not God. So, yes, you can tell men that I, I'm a believer in God. Look at me. You know, like I'm going to be a follower of Jesus, a disciple. But if you don't do it, it means nothing before men. So, I mean, you can claim to be a Christian, but if you don't actually do charity and all, I mean, do the things you're supposed to do, Men's going to think you're, you're a counterfeit, like what you're saying, but not before God, though. So what I'm sharing with you, though, it seems to me I'm just giving you kind of some examples here that there are people in the Bible who we see warnings. We see warnings where we're told to be careful of a said faith. And then there are people who think by their actions, it makes them Christians. And if I remember correctly, even Jesus talks about the wheat and the tares going up together. And sometimes we can't even sometimes tell the difference between the two. Yeah. But the thing that I've, that I've been sharing in my streams that's very consistent is, look, we are saved completely 100% by God's grace if we truly believe in the gospel. At the same time, a truly born again genuinely made alive, new creation, Jesus Christ, because of the work of God working in their life, in time, it may be subtle, it may be small, some might be more, some might be less, but there's going to be something that God is working in us and conforming us to be his witnesses in this world. Right. 
And that's what I've been saying for years. This is nothing new on my channel. Genuine Christians, there will be something from Christ in their life that he's doing that will be visibly seen to people around us. And I would just disagree. I would say not necessarily, but I see where you're coming from. I agree that there will be change at the at, 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 even initially that we're new creatures in Christ, we're born from above, we're children, we're shot to the heavenly, seated in the heavenlies with Christ. So that is a change initial. But after that, it's it's probable we'll do works. It's something that's natural, I think, but it's not guaranteed. Do you see where I'm coming from? Well, the issue of guaranteed. I think that might be just a difference of views of what you're, where you're coming from, because I really want you to understand where I'm coming from. I am 100,000 million percent justified by faith in Jesus Christ. We are saved. Okay. The difference here is, is that we see, I mean, th there are so many warnings in scripture that Paul says to Christians, he says in first Corinthians yeah. 15, he says, the gospel which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. He says in the second letter, or do you yeah. not know that Christ is in you, or you fail the test? I mean, Paul would at times write to Christian associations and still challenge them to make sure that they knew they were truly of the Lord. Peter says in 2 Peter, and I'm not a Calvinist, even though I get accused of it all the time. He says, make your election and calling sure. So yeah. all that I'm saying, I've been saying is because, like, and I don't use this to try to make myself look better than anybody. I'm 52. I've been a believer since the age of six. I've been blessed over the years to be involved in different types of ministries and churches, whether it be children's ministry, youth, adults, an elder, assistant pastor, lay pastor, whatever it may be, I've had accountability. I've learned, I've learned some of the really bad parts of church politics from different things that where we had to leave some churches. Yeah. I know the ugliness of this. My point is I've seen people in churches. It's a show. So club, it's just yeah. there for yeah. fun and they're playing the game. And so all that I say to people is, look, I believe that if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, he who began a good work in you, he will complete it. At the same time is, if there are people out there who are living in sin, living a habitual lifestyle of adultery, whatever it could be of debauchery, and they claim to be a Christian, but they have no regard to want to turn from that, right. I see big red flags. Of course. Big red flags. Yeah. yeah. Right? And that's where I've been saying the whole time. That's nothing different than what I've been saying. Okay, so I, I agree that but this lets you know free gracers, we don't think we don't say it's okay that you're gonna go unscathed if you go ahead and live in sin and debauchery. There's gonna be plenty of natural consequences. An example is that person that incest with his mother. Paul says, Let him go to the devil, let him go to the world, and the world will humble him. And so he comes back and refine, and then he'll find out how that's not a good idea to do. God chastises his son. There's going to be punishment, correction from God. So do you think that free graces are saying it's like a it's like a, a carte blanche or something? We could just go sin and God's a-okay -okay with it? We never say that. Well, I mean, you did kind of allude to that a little bit early on with like when I was going to Ephesians 5 saying like, you know, if people are doing these things, all that you really have to worry about is just your rewards. I would agree that we do have rewards. The Bible does talk about that. I am very familiar yeah. with that. I would just caution. My caution is, is that people who say, well, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to lose my rewards. I think it's kind of like almost a slap in the face of Christ because Paul also says about grace and, and Titus 2, 11, he yeah. says the grace of God has now appeared teaching us to right. deny yeah. all ungodliness. I agree. So, yeah. so true grace actually teaches us to turn from sin. Yes. True grace. I agree. So all that I've been saying, so you understand, is if someone claims they can do whatever they want and they don't have any worries about it, I think that person needs a self-check because right. they yeah. might not be saved, right? And I've heard people in the free grace movement, 
uh, who have said that this is a big red flag for me. I don't know if you're here or not, but I've heard people say to me, and I've listened to some videos as well, where if someone said they believe in Jesus, say, how many ever years ago? And then they become either, say, a Muslim or a Satanist. And right. then they completely are blaspheming Jesus Christ and the gospel. And then right. they die in that state. I could never affirm that they were a genuine believer. You know why? Because Paul says in Second or 1 Corinthians 12, he says, nobody can call Jesus Lord unless it's through the Holy Spirit. Truly, right? Right. It also says in that same verse, nobody can say Jesus is accursed with the Holy Spirit. So if someone who is, quote unquote, claimed to have been a Christian, but then departs from the faith and then becomes a Satanist or say a Muslim, attacking the Christian faith and dies in that state, that goes against the very words of God's word. Yeah. No, I see your point. I. I, I mean, in, in one of my criticisms of you, I, I gave several examples. Laodicea was one of them. Well, I went uh, through that earlier, so if you want to maybe take a peek at that, I went through that. I will. And then also, I would bring up Solomon, 1 Kings 11. So I just I would like to ask you, do you think Solomon was saved, or would you say he was unsaved? Uh, which, which text? I would just want to see it. 1 Kings 11. It gets really explicit. You'll see where it goes. Give me just one second there to go sure, through. Sure, yeah. I haven't read that in a while. And it, I don't know. I, I was just trying to find someone who said, dude, was apparently blocked in the live chat. I don't know who did it. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been trying to go through my settings here, and it's not showing up on my settings as we're talking. I don't know if it actually will have it fresh right now. So sorry for whatever happened there. But anyway, I'm enjoying just talking with you currently right now. And that was yeah. what the main thing was supposed to be. So uh, let me just put this up here. So you said First Kings 11. What was the text again? It's like one through seven. You, you, you'll see. It, it's like a slow. It it goes. It, it's like a um, it's it, like a snowball rolling down a hill. You'll okay. see how. Yeah. All right. So First Kings eleven, just to make sure. So I haven't read this in a while, so I just want to read it slowly. Sure. All right. So now King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sido, Sidian. Hittite women for the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, you shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you, for they shall surely turn your heart away after their gods. Solomon held fast to these in love. He had 700, I remember this, that's funny, 700 princes and wives, princesses and 300 concubines. I wonder how many princesses he had. Um, and his wives turned his heart away. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart away after other gods, and his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. For Solomon went after Asturah, the goddess of the Sidians. Um, I'm assuming I'm saying that name right. After Michom, the detestable idol of the Ammonites, Solomon did what is evil in the sight of the Lord and did not follow the Lord fully as his father had done. Then Solomon built the high place for Chemis, the test detestable idol of Moab, and on the mountain which is east of Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the detestable idol of the sons of Ammon. Yeah. So this is a pretty, yeah, you're, you're right in regards to this interesting list of uh, stuff. And what I would say, I was just trying to remember where is this at, Towards the end of Solomon's life, this is in um, Ecclesiastes 12, and this is where, towards the end of his life, what, we, what he concludes with. And he says, Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, when you say, I have no delight in them. Before the sun, the light, the moon, the stars are dark, and the clouds return after the rain. And the day of the watchmen of the house of the house tremble and mighty men stoop, grinding stones, stand idle because of their few. And those who look through windows grow dim and the doors of the street are shut. A sound of the grinding mill is low and one will arise at the sound of the bird and all the daughters of the song will sing softly. Furthermore, men are afraid of a high place and of terrors of the road and the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags himself along. And the caper berry is ineffective. For the man goes to his eternal home, 
while the mourners go into the street. Remember him before the silver cord is broken and the golden bowl is crushed. The pitcher by the well is shattered and the wheel of the cistern is crushed. Then the dust will return to the earth that it is was and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, all is vanity. And this is what he concludes with. In addition to being a wise man, the preacher also taught the people knowledge and he pondered and searched out and arranged many proverbs. The preacher sought to find delightful words to write words of truth correctly. The words of the wise men are like goads, and the master of these collections are like well-driven nails. They are given by one shepherd. But beyond this, my son, be warned. And the writing of many books is endless. An excessive devotion to books is wearying to the body. The conclusion, when all is said, when all has been heard, is fear God, keep his commandments, because this applies to every person. For God will bring every act of judgment, everything which is hidden, whether good or evil. So I would say to you, when we look at what was listed there for sure of Solomon, what he was doing at the time was definitely detestable and not obeying God. Yeah. But I believe towards the end of his life, that wasn't the case, as we'd see throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, that his heart was turning back to God. And I would just say, because I looked this up a little bit, it's, I mean, you can do your own research. And I, the textual critics put Kings to be uh, older, in, uh, like the older date than Ecclesiastes. And keep in mind, it says when Solomon was his, in his last days, his, his end age in 1 Kings 11. So it seems to be, I mean, if, the, if it was after that, it was at the very, 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 very last, you know, couple years of his life, which I don't think so. I think 1 Kings 11 is actually talking about his very last years rather well, than Ecclesiastes. And like we would normally say when people are on their deathbeds, we don't know what happens to yeah, that last right. breath. Too, I don't right? know. So right, we don't, yeah. we can only, you know, Speculate. when I talk to people who, you know, I, I believe somebody could be an absolute horrendous sinner their whole life and they have one minute or less before they're going to pass away and they right. give their life to Jesus Christ, they're saved. So we, don't, we, so we don't know exactly what happened to Saul in his last breath. Right. No, that's a good point. Yeah. So I'm glad you believe in like, uh, you know, deathbed confessions and where people can be saved in their deathbed. Cause I, I didn't even know that you did, you believe that. So I appreciate that. Well, I think, you know, and I want to say this as, as, as kind as I can, I think there's a lot of things that you, you may have assumed about me that weren't accurate and okay. you kind of maybe ran with a few things. So I would, I would say to you in the future, if you do more videos at all at me, it's just at least try to be a little bit better with me overall of where I'm coming from. Okay. And I think that might be more fruitful because, yeah. you know, I, I don't agree with completely with free grace theology, but I don't make it my goal to go after them or, you know, I may say something from time to time. Someone asks me a right. question, but for the most part, free grace gets justification, right? I believe that. The yeah. danger, I think, sometimes is sometimes with some people is what they think that, you know, there doesn't need necessarily be some kind of quote unquote change in a Christian's life. Right. And some people just think they can just do whatever they want. And that's why I think there are scriptures that Paul writes that we have to be careful right. because as you've openly acknowledged that there can be people who think they're saved, yeah. but they're yeah. really not. I would agree. And no, I appreciate that. Like, how you're into genuine faith and so am i and this, i just want to say something about free grace too that we absolutely want people to live holy righteous lives godly lives we want that i i encourage it i don't encourage people to sin and act you know in my channel maybe you've seen one of the worst shows we ever had it was a lot of stuff going on there that's not our typical show kelly we don't intend it to be like a dumpster fire even though you've seen that happen and the problem is, it's like different personalities get involved. It's an open forum. We have different people coming in there and things get out awry really quick. So I don't encourage that. I don't like it. I love living a godly life. I want to live a godly life. Well, we all and want I would to grow, right? That. We, we all, I mean, yeah. we want to grow, right? Correct. Can I say something openly to you and, and not try to sure. be judging? Yeah. Ephesians 5. Just ponder those words because I'm, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not God. But what, what I sometimes have seen is with the language there and how people sometimes are being attacked at times. I'm sure you've had good streams in the past, like you've said. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying what I've been seeing a little bit lately. And 
imagine if a you know a non-christian who's you know streaming through right. channels and they come across right. that what's that going to say about the christian faith not good it, it doesn't represent christ at all the, the faith at all i agree completely yeah i'm not here to condemn you i'm, I'm not i'm not trying to be your thank enemy, you Tom. i'm not thank trying to be your enemy i'm trying to be a brother to people out here to help encourage people to grow in christ to mature in christ and we're yes. all in the same camp there if we're in the body of christ we want to help grow together and right. we want to help encourage people to turn from sin or certainly not as a works based, but encourage them. Look, this is God's saved you. Right. You have a changed life now. Now walk in it. Right. Amen. I would, I would uh, concur with you hundred percent. Well, I appreciate you know, I was, you I was in the flesh, Kelly, I'll admit it. You know, I'll, I apologize. Maybe I was way too harsh on you. Maybe I could have uh, came to you and maybe we could have talked more of this stuff out. So I admit that I'm in the air there. I apologize I did, for that. I, and I received that. I did mention that earlier in tonight's stream. I said, if you would have probably approached me privately and some of these disagreements, a lot of this garbage wouldn't have happened. Right. Well, thank you for coming on, Tom. I appreciate this. This was a civil conversation and, See, I'm yeah. not with the big meanie after all. No. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate you having me. A good discussion. I enjoyed it. And uh, you know what? I'll take down those streams. So you don't have to have that negative publicity out there. Sorry about that. Well, if you take them all down, I'll take mine down. Cool. I appreciate that. Fair enough? Fair enough. All right. Tom, have a good rest of your night. Uh, you too, Kelly. Bye-bye.